What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another 2021 New Knife Preview video. Um, we've got Boker in the house today, and we're talking about some stuff that I'm excited about. Um, but I have Karsten, the CEO of Boker Germany over here. And uh, Karsten, welcome to kind of the New Knife Preview for Boker. Um, Thanks. Glad you're here. Yeah, um, so glad to you, be here. You have some interesting stuff on the table. Like I said, I have some stuff that I'm stoked about and uh, you have some uh, interesting pieces over there. What is the first knife that you have to show us? The first knife is also on the cover of the new Boker USA catalog. It's, uh, we're all excited about it. Um, it's the M4 Sherman Damascus knife. Um, well, some of you might know um, the Boker Leopard Damascus or Turpitz Damascus knives, mm -hmm. um, huge success. And Boker um, has a long history in knife making, as you know, in Germany, but also in the US. Um, there was a Boker plant in New Jersey from 1900 to 1945, until the end of the war. Right. Boker USA made knives in New Jersey. And so we have also a production history here in this country. Right. And well, talking about um, the the tank projects and the and the battleship projects, um, the Boker USA sales force says, "Hey, what about the idea of doing a Damascus project with an American tank?" We did a video with uh, Boker Germany, so we ended up. I think that was probably a little over a year ago now. Um, yeah, one and a half already. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I suppose yeah. it was September. Yeah. Um, so we went over there, did a whole video on Boker Germany. And one of the things that we learned about or saw there was the Leopard Damascus knives. Yeah. I'm actually really excited because, you know, Leopard being, you know, a German tank. So now you have kind of an American version of, of that knife, which I'm super stoked about. Correct. And it's even more exciting because, well, the Leopard is still in use. Um, the, already the second version, the Leopard 2, mm -hmm. a very popular tank. Um, but now we're talking here about a World War II project. Right. So um, we had first to find some some original <laughs> parts of the, yeah, of the how tanks. Did get, how did you get a hold of the steel? <laughs> yes, that was really um, um, the work of uh, the Boker USA team. Um, they teamed up with a museum in Virginia. Um, they have original parts of the Sherman tank Okay. And um, we teamed up with them and um, have a cooperation with them. So we received original parts of the tank, of the Sherman tank, brought them to Mississippi to Chad, Chad Nichols, mm -hmm. our Damascus uh, bladesmith. Well, and this is the result, you know, uh, hand forged. It is beautiful. Hand forged Damascus blade. Um, the pattern we chose um, is kind of the track of a tank in the mud. Okay. Right. Yep. Um, we also the design. We tried to uh, get some some specs of the original Sherman tank into the into the knife. Um, the blade screw is kind of the first wheel where the chain is driven on the tank. Um, handles or uh, scales is uh, burlap Mikada, dark army green, U.S. Army green of the Second World War, and mixed up with coyote like of the US Marine Corps. I have to say, I love what you're doing with the themes of these knives. So not only are you creating a beautiful piece, right? Yeah. But you have kind of elements of the of what it was made out of. So you have, like you're talking about, all those, um, you know, the the pivot being kind of part of that cog wheel of the yeah. Sherman tank yeah. and the and the pattern, the specific Damascus pattern is, you know, meant to mimic the, the track yeah. pattern of the tank. So yeah. I love the themes that you're putting into uh, all of these knives and the product that you get out of them. Yeah. And also, um, that's a difference to the to the Leopard Damascus and the Turpitz Damascus. Um, we tried to get a little down and price wise, so we we decided to go for um, steel um, frame lock, um, okay, right um, pattern, and not a liner lock with two scales. Also, um, hinderer lock stop um, and a deep carry pocket clip, mm -hmm. one end opener. So, yeah. That All is a, handmade in Germany. That is definitely a super cool piece. I love to see stuff like that, and especially cool to see that um, you kind of have basically a U.S. version of, of a very yeah. beautiful knife. So. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Um, I have something, I think this caught my eye right away when you were showing kind of the spread for this video earlier. Um, this is the Quaken Air. Correct. So. Lots of versions of the Quaken. Um, there's automatic versions, there's slipper versions, there's you know a whole bunch of different sizes and variations. Uh, this is the kind of first slim down minimalist version of the Quaken design. And obviously the Quaken design being a Burnley design. 
I've always liked it when manufacturers take and, and simplify and slim things down, and I think this nails it. So you have this, uh, again, slimmer design. So your regular clicking is a little bit thicker. You have G10 handles, VG10 blade, which is super cool. And I think one of my favorite features of this particular knife mm -hmm. is the pocket clip you yeah. guys have done. So if you kind of look in here, you'll see this nice deep carry, almost skeletonized, I guess, pocket yeah. clip here. And the screws are recessed, which I know a lot of people are really getting into now. It's something that's not gonna bind on your pocket and it makes for a nice pocketable, easy carry knife. Yeah. Um, I'll have to, I'll have to, I have to ask a question. Will this come in a mini version? Ah, uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I need some trade I, secrets here. I, I'm very sure it will come in a mini version. Okay. But there are three versions now out. Um, it's uh, G10 scales, um, Micarta scales, and oh, Cocobolo scales, and uh, titanium. Cool. So, but all in the size, but I'm sure there will be a ton of variations out there. Okay, I'll hold yeah. you to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, I'm a really big fan of the Quaken design, and I think you guys have nailed it uh, with the new slimmer, yeah. um, simpler design. So I love that. Cool. What else do you have next? You have some interesting yeah, stuff over there. I have some interesting stuff um, out of the Zoling um, production. Um, I just want to remind you that we uh, in Zoling, you know, being a German pocket knife maker, mm -hmm. unfortunately, the last really big one with 50 people in the production. Um, there are some other guys in Germany, but well, Way, way smaller than we are, and um, there are reasons for it. You know, the, the Asian makers um, and the American makers, a lot of comp competition out there. So we have to position ourselves in the, in the market and find the, find the right way for Boker, you know. And, you know, our three, the, the, the core for us, it's, it's, it's handmade. We have a long tradition, 300 years in business, and we have passion for our knives. And we want that our product shows this, which mm -hmm. is handmade in, in Germany. On top, I don't want to get in the political side here, but just to let you know, at the moment, we have to pay 25% tariff on each folding knife that is made in Germany to bring it into the US. So cost-wise, not the best position for us yeah. in, the, in the market. But okay, it's, it's what it is. So we have to position ourselves. So we say, all right, um, we have the cost there. Um, so we are expensive no matter what. Um, but so we have to bring the quality, we have to bring the innovation, you know, and, and the whole, the whole package has to, has to fit. So, um, we are concentrating now more and more on modern traditionals. And here you see uh, the latest Barlow version. You've seen hundreds of Barlows in For the sure. market, but this is extremely slim and very light. And the trick here is there's no metal liner. Um, the, we call it the integral. So a piece of burlap micarta is the liner and the bolster at the same time. So we, um, this is milled out here and there's a, a piece of um, desert iron wood put on it as, as the scale. So you have a very slim, very light um, pocket knife. This version, high end with a leopard Damascus blade. Okay. There are also versions out there. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask base. if it. Yes. So I saw that you have some Damascus versions. Uh, will there yeah. be uh, a more affordable? Of course, um, of course. And the walk and talk is is very nice, and you know, and this is exactly the modern traditional way we're heading to with our Zoling production. One thing I just want to reiterate about uh, these particular ones. So when we were going over these earlier, you had handed me one and I was just expecting kind of your regular weighted traditional knife. And when I got it in my hand, I was shocked yeah. at how light it was. So yeah. uh, I think that might be one of the bigger selling points of that specific knife. The, yeah. like the design and everything is also very nice, but it is extremely light. And I think that is great for a knife without a pocket clip, right? So yeah. if it's going to be living in the bottom of your pocket, Having Correct. it take up as the least amount of weight possible, I think, is a huge selling point. Yeah, for that particular knife. Actually, talking about a you know a normal steel blade with an acid wash um, here and um, a canvas micarta scales, same system, mm -hmm. no metal liner, extremely light, big pivot screw, so very nice, nice and walk and talk. Yeah. Very cool. Um, it's co it's cool to see some innovation in the kind of the traditional modern yeah. traditional traditional that's, space as well. And that's exactly. Bow Cool. Yeah. Next up, 
Well, I'm, I'm excited about all the knives in front of me. <laughs> I hope so. But, like, again, this is another really exciting one. And these one. are only the highlights. Yeah. There are way more in the catalog, of course, but we For have sure. limited time. Unfortunately, <laughs> we cannot put every single new knife that we that's... have in, in the video, but uh, this is another one that's exciting for me. So this is something you guys have all seen before. So the Boker Plus Balasong Trainer, it's been popular. It's been out for a little while. It's a very smooth flipping, well-priced Balasong Trainer. Well, I got something for you. If I open this up, this is a live blade version. <laughs> I was waiting for you guys yeah. to come out with a live blade version. We were waiting because we, we've been selling this, these knives uh, big time in Europe. Big time, but now we have the possibility yeah. to offer them here in the US. Um, I'm under the opinion that the trainer is probably one of the best place price wise yes. um, when it comes to Balasong trainers. So it's cool to see like this is everything you love about the Balasong trainer from you guys, yeah. but it's the live blade version. So if you've been dying for like uh, the like, the live bladed version of the Balasong trainer, this is for you. So like the G10 handles, you have the spring loaded latch. Um, obviously you have um, D2. Yeah, it's a so D2 you have blade. your D2 blade. So these, a lot of times when we do these videos, we get, you know, prototypes or pre-production models. Yeah. Uh, so the, this blade will be D2. Um, but again, I, I've said it twice already, but this, everything you love yeah. about the yeah. Boker Plus Balasong trainer, you have, you have in the Boker Plus Balasong. It also comes in the mini, just like the trainer version does. So if the large one isn't, you know, for you, you have the mini version. Uh, and it's my understanding that these will be coming in different colors uh, at some point, yeah. correct? Yeah, definitely different blade styles, colors, you name yeah. it. Um, they're so successful because they're hitting exactly the, the, the sweet spot between the high end Bali songs mm -hmm. and the way cheaper stuff out of Asia, um, you know, good price point, $80, $90. Yeah. And then, but an outstanding quality. For sure. If you're looking for an awesome quality, well flipping Balasong yeah. um, for a killer price, I think these yeah. fit the bill. And like I said, different variations, large, small. The, the I know the trainers come in a blue and a red. Um, there's these black ones, and you said there's there's gonna be more yeah, colors. So more pick your come. poison when it comes to which variation that you prefer. There's yeah. there's gonna be something for you in this line. So that's the uh, Boker Plus Balasong. Uh, I'm super pumped about that. Right. Well, and now we jump into a completely different uh, section. Um, we sell a lot of tactical pen, sure. um, like like uh, other companies as well. This is not a tactical pen, what I'll show you here. This is a thousand year old technique, ethograph it's called. It's a um, metallic tip and it's no ink or no refill or no, um, no abrasive. It just reacts by oxidation. The oxidation of this metallic tip and paper reacts. You, you can't get it away. It, it stays, you know, it, it rides forever. I can do this forever. Here. <laughs> I think that, well, that, that's a great point. I think yes. that is a valid selling point of that pen. Um, the fact that you don't have to change cartridges, right? Especially for somebody who uses your pen a lot, like yeah. you can potentially go through cartridges pretty fast. Oh yeah. So that is a selling point. I think also something that's cool about that is how simple it is. So if you're an EDC guy and you're, you know, you work in a little bit rougher environment, you don't have to worry about a pen breaking or exploding in your pocket or anything like that. It's just going to work. Correct. And it has a titanium handle or titanium body basically, plus this uh, ethograph tip. A cool pocket clip you can take away if you want. Um, so the the very classy uh, pen style mm -hmm. uh, we decided for this and a very competitive pricing. Yeah. Um, so that's the trick here. We, uh, this technique is out there, yes, but sky high pricing, and and we bring it down to an affordable level. I love it. Yeah, I've seen yeah. I've seen a few of these things floating around social media and stuff, and I always yeah. thought, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. I've never actually held one until today and tried it until today. So uh, yeah. it's definitely a cool technique. Um, it definitely has some advantages when it comes to you know uh, maintenance, when it comes to durability as well. Yeah. So and it's just a cool item. Yeah, that it's, nobody else has in their pocket. So so be one of the first <laughs> for sure. So get yourself show uh, to your bodies. <laughs> get yourself a pen that uses the ethograph technique. Yes. Yes. All right. Up next is my, my the one I have uh, on the table is the last one that I have. 
This one's fun uh, because of the fidget factor. So this is the USB OTF. Yeah. Uh, USB because <laughs> some some idiot came to this. <laughs> <laughs> I heard this was this was Karsten's. It was me. <laughs> I heard this was Karsten's idea, but I guess uh, USB just like a USB thumb drive. It, yeah. it does kind of look like a USB thumb drive. So yeah. that's that's the uh, onus behind the name. This thing is very fidgetable. Yeah. Um, I've been flicking it open and closed for quite a long time since I've had it on the table here. Like it's nice and responsive, it's easy to actuate, and it's just fun. Yeah. Um, this one will also be coming in at a very affordable price. Again, so pricing Absolutely. all of this stuff, guys, uh, make sure you check the listings, check the website. Um, we'll have all the pricing available okay. there. Um, but yeah, I think you guys have nailed the fact that this is just super fidgetable and fun. I know there is our, there are a few people, <clears throat> Kurt, um, <laughs> in the department that really like fidgeting with OTFs. Yeah. And I think Kurt would really, really enjoy oh, yeah. something like this. Uh, and then it's just a nice, useful California legal blade as well, right? Correct. Um, so you have sub two inches. Uh, I, would, I would say that most people don't need a giant, you know, four and a half inch blade. So this is probably gonna do, especially for somebody in an office situation, this is probably yeah. gonna do everything you yeah. need. For cutting purposes, normal office cutting or gentlemen's knives cutting purposes, yeah. no problem. And it's a cool game factor. Yeah. I think that's know. a big thing with the USB OTF. Yes. It's just fun, man. So yeah. uh, if you're looking for a fun, uh, inexpensive little OTF that you can, um, you know, potentially use California legal. Again, we don't give legal, legal advice here. Check yeah. your state's laws. Uh, but this fits the length limitation for that. So that's the USB OTF. Um, so one thing I wanted to talk about, we have, we have, you've got a couple more on the table. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to make this a broader discussion on Boker as a whole. So I think an interesting thing about Boker is the range of mm -hmm. products that you guys have. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Well, Boker is known for the Boker Zoling production, right? Um, the one here, the, the, the tank knife. Mm -hmm. um, that is clearly Boker Zoling production. Um, we have production in Germany, in Zoling, the headquarter, and we have production in Argentina. Mm -hmm. um, in Buenos Aires, Boca Abolito. So, so we cover different quality and price points with different brands. So, so on the top in the premium segment is Boca Solingen, made in Germany. Mm -hmm. Then is Boca Abolito, made in Argentina. Both 100% made by us in our plants. But we have two other brands um, very successfully established in the markets. One is Boca Plus. Yes, it's Boker. It's a Boker knife, external design, but not made by Boker, but uh, manufactured by, by partner companies. And not only in China, what some people like to hear or um, keep to say, it's, it's yes, it's China, but it's mainly Taiwan. It's Italy, Spain, and even the US. Mm -hmm. For example, Protec or Hoke, Right. Ma manufactures knives for us. Yeah, so if you guys like the uh, Quake and Auto, for instance, like that's a Protec yes, knife. Yes, that's that a Protec That's knife. in that line as well. Exactly. Um, or we team up with our friends in Italy um, with Fox Knives. Um, they produce uh, knives for, Bo for the Boca Plus line or in Taiwan or in China. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's, um, it's a widespread um, um, even in the Boca Plus line. And then we have our, uh, for the entry level, Boca Magnum. And Boca Magnum is clearly made in China. Otherwise, the price points uh, you wouldn't get there. Um, yeah, for sure. It's it's around the thirty, the twenty to thirty uh, dollar per knife, and it, it's you know for the guy who for for the weekend trip or yeah. doesn't want to spend a fortune. I think that's a, a good. That's a cool thing that Boker does because depending on which Boker brand you buy, it's it's easy to tell you know where it was manufactured and kind of the price point you're hitting. Yes. And we are very open and transparent with the country of origin, um, always. Um, um, and um, so I'm pretty successful so mm -hmm. with this. So you kind of have on the table there kind of the opposite, the opposite yes. ends of the spectrum. Like yes. you have something that is accessible to like almost everybody in Correct. the world, right? And then you have uh, kind of that more premium Boker um, knife. Correct. So I start with the with the lower end, yeah. so to say, that's a that's a Magnum, a uh, clear Magnum design. Um, it's um, spring assisted, dagger blade, and a huge a huge seller in Europe. And um, now we bring this to the U.S. and um, I'm sure it will 
will find a lot of friends here as well. Yeah. But that's a classic a Magnum, Boca Magnum knife, um, below $30 uh, price point, um, well made, does its job, and it's just too f fun, right. fun to play with it. And Yeah, yeah. nice assisted, again, accessible to almost everybody. Correct. And on the other hand, this is the Boca Plus Collection 2021, made in Italy by Fox, Todd Rexford design, mm -hmm. the epicenter in a new modern interpretation, marble carbon fiber scales, titanium bolsters, M390 blade, um, milled pocket clip with a um, ceramic ball here, frame lock, titanium frame lock. So the latest and greatest in materials. Seems like, yeah, it checks all the boxes when it comes to premium materials. Absolutely. But a Boca Plus knife because it's not made by us. It's made by our partners in Italy mm -hmm. and um, it's strictly limited to 500 pieces worldwide. We just were in a meeting where the buyers already fought, <laughs> fought for, the, yeah. for the numbers, how many they get. Yeah, so, uh, so they're, they're serialized. Oh, serialized and absolutely strictly limited. Um, last year we had a, a Lucas Burnley design that was sold out pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, so this time, this year, Todd Rexford. We're very happy about this knife, but this shows this is a Boca knife. Right. It's a Boca Plus knife made by our partners, high end. Yeah. And here we have a Boca Magnum knife on the lower price point, but still our, our lifetime guarantee, of course, behind every Boca product, no doubt. Doesn't matter if it's below 30 or above 500 uh, US dollar price point. So it's our knife. Yeah. Yeah, so it's definitely cool to see kind of the range that you guys cover. Um, I don't think there's a lot of manufacturers that, you know, manufacture knives for people, you know, kind of in that, you know, you said we we're saying sub $30 range, yeah. right? All the way up to that, you know, 500 plus range. Like, yeah. So there's a huge spread of knives for everybody in the Boker line. Yeah. So. Awesome. Uh, I think that's all we got on the table. So there's way more to show in the catalogs, <laughs> but. Uh, we have limited time here, yeah. so no problem. So if you guys are interested in, uh, you know, like I said, we kind of have the the cream of the crop type stuff that we, we picked up before the video, but if you're interested in more Boker knives, make sure you check out the website, goodobladehq.com. Karsten, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. For sure. It's fun. <laughs> make sure you guys uh, check out the New Knives 2021 playlist. Uh, there's a bunch of awesome brands, uh, New Knives, on that playlist, and we will see you guys on the next one. Hey, you made it to the end screen. If you're not already subscribed to Blade HQ's YouTube channel, hit that button right over there. If you wanna check out some of the knives that were featured in this video, head on over to bladehq.com. And down below, there's our new 2021 product playlist. We'll see you in the next one.